Yeah. Top heavy like I'm brain struck, looking like I'm tick top. Shining like your wristwatch, I'm gonna grab your wrist, lock it down to the thing pop. Can you stick around for a minute till the rain stop? Please, God. Top heavy like I'm brain struck, looking like I'm tick top. Shining like. Mm -hmm. That's Robert, <laughs> has you dancing, Yori, <laughs> with that music. Well, good to see you all. I hope y'all are doing well today. I'm excited to introduce someone to you who's going to jump in in just a minute, but we wanted to start off with a little bit of an announcement about some upcoming work that we're doing uh, with the lovely Hiring for Diversity book. I want to give Arthur a quick second to go ahead and share about our upcoming series. Thanks so much, Nicole. Yeah, and great to see everyone. Um, we have a new uh, book club that is launching on September 23rd. It's called our Book Club Action Series. Um, and what we're actually doing is every week, we're going to dive into a, a new topic uh, around inclusive hiring, which is going to be um, focusing in on, uh, you know, basically a new chapter. And uh, what's cool about this is we're gonna, in, you know, interview folks that we actually interviewed for the book and dive in on tactics and strategies for each uh, topic. So we'll kick off with diversity goal setting on September 23rd, and then we'll move into um, everything from, you know, uh, building an inclusive talent brand and writing an inclusive job description all the way to inclusive interviewing. So hopefully everyone can join us. We'll send the link around um, and we'll be sending around a full announcement um, later today, but wanted to give everyone the heads up in the meantime. Thanks, Arthur. All right, friends, looking forward to stepping in. If this is your first time at um, Growing Leaders in DEI, um, excited to have you. This is a very um, fun room. It's a little bit unconventional in the ways that we engage in conversations. Just wanted to prep you for that. Feel free to keep your cameras off. You can kind of like let this wash over you like a podcast or you can be really engaged. Would love to have you uh, communicate and tell us what you're thinking. Talk about your best practices. The way that I um, normally host these sessions is very much rooted in my love for storytelling and my love for education. I come from the K through 12 education background, but also worked in entertainment. So there's a great deal of like fun artistry. As you can see, Robert came in with that great playlist. Um, but think through um, your work and your journey as a diversity, equity, and inclusion, someone who loves it and wants to be a part of it. I, I literally consider you a DEI professional and we are trying to grow in that. So have your notebook, feel free to like take notes, bring in your practices as we um, ask questions of ourselves, feel free to ask those questions of yourself too. It's really just gonna help to mold your practice and it's gonna make things a bit easier as you engage in a lot of the rough stuff that I'm sure that you're experiencing in your workspace as we are going through this shift, right? So this space is just helping to condition you to help you to become a bit more confident in the work, in the work that you're doing. Um, today, I'm actually taking a really cool seat where I am going to be sharing my moderation with someone else or like allowing someone else to take this on for me. I'm bringing in a diversity, equity, and inclusion consultant that I have worked with who's worked in corporate and in K through 12 and in some higher education spaces, I'm sure. Um, She's just so well needed in this world. Dina Lewis is gonna be taking my spot as a moderator today. Um, and then uh, you're gonna hear from Matheson Peeps. We're focusing on, and I will pull this up um, on the screen. Um, we're focusing on incorporating DEI into company values. We did a little bit of that last week. Um, but now it's about time for us to really give you all space to talk to give our Madison employees space to talk about it as well. Um, so what I'll do though, first is we're gonna have Dina share out a lot about her experience to get our minds kind of moving in the same direction. Um, and then when you hear our Matheson employees share out, they're gonna be speaking directly to a question that I've asked internally around, how are you seeing Matheson incorporate DEI into company values. So you'll hear specific things that we're doing, systems we're putting in place, behaviors that we're trying to shift, um, and like large scale themes that sometimes feel really out of our reach. We're gonna hear from employees about how they feel that we're doing the work. And that's really exciting. And that's why it's cool for me to take a step back, tell you the truth. Um, so why don't we do it like this? I will introduce the lovely Dina. Lewis, thank you for being in this space. And then Dina's going to hand it over to Robert midway through. Go for it, Dina. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Nicole, for having me. I'm so excited to be here this afternoon. 
Um, a little bit about me, like Nicole said, I have 10 years as a teacher. Um, I taught eighth grade through 12th grade, both in Miami, Florida and New York. I'm currently in Miami. I taught theater and ballet. So also being an actor myself, I feel like the two married each other as far as like my love for education, kids, continuous learning for myself and growth and development, as well as that creative aspect of just letting the inner artist within uh, express and create and also allowing that same creative expression to ignite within the next generation to also empower them to use their voice and their creative superpowers, I like to call it, in order to really make long lasting and impacting change in our communities. So why are we here today? Well, we're here today to talk about, right, diversity, equity, and inclusiveness, and how that is embedded into the workforce. And I wanted to just talk a little bit about why that's so important today in 2021, and why that work has to continue to carry on. Um, RIP to Nipsey Hussle, the marathon must continue, right? So um, as a former educator, I always used to tell my students that DEI is the backbone of the work that we do. How do we say that we're actually providing an inclusive environment if we aren't being inclusive in our practices, the way we approach curriculum, the way that we approach even discipline, right? How are we really doing it in a way that restores justice instead of excommunicating people? Also working in corporate America, that's still a huge issue to this day. Um, I was actually wrongfully terminated about three weeks ago from a tech company um, due to an active investigation that's going on. I'm unable to speak on the exact details, but I will say that it is an issue in 2021, I think the Black Lives Matter movement that spurred on and the murder of George Floyd, it actually highlighted why this is still an issue um, that we need to talk about. Just simply saying we're putting together a DEI task force is not enough. I think that in order for companies such as ourselves today to really have a strong and lasting impact in DEI, we need to invite everyone to the table. We need to be able to offer a listening ear, an open heart. We need to lean into that vulnerability piece and really listen to people who are saying, hey, I'm feeling othered in this department, or I'm feeling othered or not seen or heard when I'm bringing up policies that don't necessarily impact me in the way that you're believing it to impact the majority, right? And then having an open conversation about like, what is that majority? What do they look like? And why that can be problematic if we don't have these conversations and we don't really lead into that conversation with a true um, openness to want to create change. So with that being said, I am just so excited to continue the conversation with you all. I know that Robert is going to uh, start off our discussion. So I just love to hear your answers and just kind of uh, look at this as a think tank, right? And just like bounce ideas off of each other and see how we can create a stronger lasting impact in our DEI work because it's never finished. Awesome. Thanks, Dana. This is Thank you for that introduction. Um, so I think, thought it would be really good for the team to really talk about um, their perspective when it comes to DE, the DEI principles that we spoke about last week. Um, and I think, Dina, you know, with your leadership and your thought leadership, um, you know, it would be good to hear your perspective when it comes to questions that employee, employer partners might have. Um, so I thought it would be good to kind of jump into my um, experience at Matheson when it comes to, um, well, my experience in general <laughs> when it comes to the DEI principles. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I really thought um, incorporated the DEI principles was um, upward mobility within the organization. You know, as somebody who's been here for almost two years, it kind of feels like, um, you know, I've had an opportunity to really grow within the organization. And I think that has been a huge part of me, um, you know, just, you know, really feeling like I really belong and, you know, definitely shout out to the leadership team, Arthur, Dave, Juliana, and Nicole. Um, and in addition to that, you know, the, the, the belonging piece has really made me feel more comfortable as well. So, um, you know, we, we do definitely prioritize wellness. Um, we do have the Calm app now. <laughs> I think every member has access to that. So I think these things really help me feel a lot more comfortable at Matheson, but um, I know other team members might have some uh, perspectives as well. Awesome. 
want me to go next? For sure. Kinsey, you could go. No, I just wanted to say uh, that 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 was great, Robert. And 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 internally, what I love about what we do here at Matheson is we we practice what we preach. And uh, I I feel like a big part. I always say that bias breeds for miseducation, and a big part of what we do here is we constantly educate ourselves. Uh, you know, we're constantly putting within our internal messaging groups, just communities that we're learning more about um, to help us build more empathy and understanding on how to approach them. Uh, and also to um, just kind of hold ourselves accountable to the work that we're doing here. We wanna practice what we preach. We don't claim to be uh, the end all be all experts of DEI, um, but we truly believe that it's it's really a journey um, and not not a destination. So I love that. I mean, even I'm I'm partnered with the CEO and we hold ourselves accountable to our DEI experts. So it's from the top down, um, and and it's awesome to be a part part of. I'll let you go now, Kenzie. <laughs> that sounds great, Andre. Definitely in agreement with the things that Rob and Andre have said. I've been at Matheson for a little over a year now and to watch the company evolve in itself it's been really exciting but one of the things that has truly impacted me as a professional and personally in ways I was not expecting was um, kind of in relation to one of the principles that we had up um, the practices and policies being designed to accommodate differences in the context of employees growth and I think it's number three That one's really struck me as a professional and personally because we've implemented so many different areas that do focus on us as holistic humans, like the wellness sessions, an hour of our weeks are dedicated to meditation and slowing down and connecting with our employees. Um, Self-advocacy has been a really big part of the work we've done here. And I think for myself, that's translated into all aspects of my life by feeling empowered to do just that. Um, And then creation of affinity groups. um, And then just the, all of us have this mindset of being forward thinking. Um, And so that's actually pulled me out of some, some interesting mental ruts. So overall, I guess that was a ramble, but overall that principle number three has been shining really bright for me in my experience at Matheson. Did anyone else want to share out a little bit? Yes. Um, so I've only been here for a couple of months as a fellow, but um, I will say that something that struck me um, and even throughout my like hiring process and even now was um, the internal communication that I saw. Um, I just feel like ultimately it catered to um, me, you know, just being new within the company, but also there's a cater to everyone um, through the inclusive language that's used. And also just, um, I think the care and transparency that um, everyone in the company has. Um, And if there is a miscommunication, then there's a conversation that's usually had um, and there's corrected behavior, which is something that I saw. And um, I ultimately think that we need to see more of, so yeah, thank you. I can go next. Um, Hi, everybody. I'm Yori, um, for the ones that don't know me. And I've been here since the end of May. So I haven't been here for a long time. But I can say that um, since the beginning, since the first phone interview that I had with Eden to my second one with Juliana, I have felt so welcome. I have felt inspired and I have felt like I found my people. This is actually the first ever um, career path or job that I've had that I can be fully myself and I'm not ashamed or scared or no I feel like I have blossomed um, as a person here and I feel very blessed and definitely very proud of working with these amazing people and working for not only my communities but others so yeah thank you guys I love y'all I can uh, definitely hop in as well hey everyone I am April And um, I'm really, a lot of you know my story, I'm coming from like just a really 
traumatic work experience um, within corporate America as a Black woman. And so um, I can honestly say that in a lot of ways, um, just working here with this incredible team, um, just to echo what um, a lot of my team members have shared before me, it has been so healing for me in so many ways. Um, even for example, for today, just in full transparency, I um, ate a meal last night that didn't sit well in my super, super sensitive stomach, which is henceforth why I'm off camera. Um, but with that said, at my previous places of employment, I would not have been allowed to just say, hey, I'm not really feeling 100% um, without being made to feel as if I was being lazy or if I was lying. And these are a lot of things that unfortunately, um, you know, just people from the black and brown community that we always have to deal with this stereotype of being lazy. And, um, and I just really appreciate just the team. I really appreciate Juliana, Nicole, Arthur, so many people on this team that have just created a safe space for me to say, hey, I'm not, I'm not feeling my best, but I'm here and not looking down on me, not making me feel as if um, I'm less than. And so there's just so much good that I can say about this team and um, just how grateful I am to be able to work in safe space. Thanks, April. Um, thanks for that perspective. Um, Dina, I know you have some thoughts uh, probably around um, a lot of what the team shared. Could you share um, your, your perspective on um, belonging, wellness, the DEI principles and how those come into place when it comes to, um, you know, just the workplace culture in general? Absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you all for sharing. Um, it seems like y'all are already off to a great start at this amazing company. I heard so many glow words, like I feel like I belong. I feel like I can be myself. I feel accepted for even showing up in my full self, even if it's not 100% well. Um, also, April, I hope you feel better soon. Um, and so I'm just curious to just continue to like massage out like what about the company? Like, what are some ideals and practices that are happening that's making you all feel welcome? That's making you all feel blossomed. Um, and you can share that out if you'd like in the chat, or you can come off mute and like have a conversation about that. Just curious to hear what's going on. I'm happy to speak to that. I think one of the processes that was implemented that really made me notice um, these glow words coming to life in Matheson was employee reviews. Um, so having a quarterly session with my manager where we reflect back on the quarter and we reflect forward as well, or look forward um, in my career. So kind of to Rob's point, it's been centered a lot around my professional development, but in those sessions, I've been able to self-advocate um, and ask for other processes to be implemented. So I would say purely the structure of employee review sessions has been really big for me. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? I can go next. Let me tip, thank you for my camera on. Hi everybody, um, Hi, I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, just wanna say, I feel like, like to piggyback on what Kinsey said, I remember when I had my first interview, which was my last one with Dave, which is her CEO. Dave told me, once he told me that I was hired, he told me, the first thing I wanna do is sit down with you as soon as you start. And I want you to let me know, where do you wanna be in a year from now? Think about it. And then we're gonna make it happen. And I feel like that's the first time that um, somebody, you know, like a CEO would sit down with me and just to tell me that he cares about where I wanna be, what do I wanna do and what do I care about so he can make it happen. And I think that speaks for itself and it speaks volumes. Um, now, um, I, I, I think that you can feel, Dina, our energy, and this is yes. how it is every single day. Like Kinsey mentioned earlier, we do have weekly, like Mondays and Fridays, we have the wellness sessions, and they are amazing. Um, everybody's so vulnerable, so accepting. We listen to each other, and we share um, anything that we're talking about. We have talked about childhood tra trauma and other ones. And I feel like it's been an amazing um, experience just being here. You feel so welcome and you feel like 
you everybody cares about each other. That's my take. Thank you, Yori, for sharing. That's amazing. I think wellness, mental health is number one in this work. Um, because as you all probably have experienced, there is not just like one person going through work trauma. There's a lot of people coming in with a lot of baggage. And so I think it's very important to have that time uh, split out to unpack it. Um, it really excites me that y'all are doing this Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, I'm interested too, um, someone else mentioned earlier about an affinity group and just wondering like what that affinity group looks like, um, especially coming from the last job that I was at, we had an employer resource group. And one of the things that I was advocating for was actually implementing resources, right? Not just having a space where we're able to just talk about our grievances or just being open and vulnerable about things we're struggling with, but what are some resources that the company can provide for us, right? I also heard someone speak about um, self-advocacy. So what if a worker is coming in and they don't have experience or this is their first time learning how to self-advocate? Uh, what are resources that companies can bring in to teach a worker how to self-advocate? And also keeping in mind that it's not a waste of money when you're empowering your workers to have stronger voices, right? Because when one is strong, like we're all strong, we're equally as strong as our teammates. Um, so I think that's really important to think about too. Um, what other resources are you bringing in to also restore balance? Life happens, right? There is going to come a time when there is an icky conversation that you've had with an employer, with a customer, with a client, so who are you able to go to within your job that is going to be not only a safe space for you to feel heard without judgment, but also a place where there is that restorative piece where you do feel connected back to the mission of your work, your purpose within the company, and also knowing that you have a team behind you. I think that's what's lacking in corporate America is really having that system where um, you're being heard and these microaggressions are being looked at under a microscope and not just necessarily, right, just being pushed under the rug. And, oh, that's just their perspective. We don't see it, so it doesn't exist, right? I'm going to read the chat. Saw it going off. <laughs> I, can, I can talk about it, Dina, a little bit, just well, so I don't have everyone read it. Um, but one thing that I think has been really helpful for me as a manager is making sure that everyone on my team has that one-on-one -on -one weekly. Um, it's really easy when things are kind of going well and you don't feel that there are a lot of things to talk about to push that. Um, but the least that your direct reports or anyone that you're, you're working with can have is 30 minutes of your week that's focused solely on them. Um, this can be you know, a list of to-dos, but it can also just be a temperature check. Like these are human beings who have a lot going on. And sometimes they're not feeling great about work. And it's better to find that out during that one-on-one -on -one than wait a few months because you actually don't end up talking to them for a few weeks. Um, so I've just seen, it's been something that I've been prioritizing since I started at Matheson. It's advice that I've heard from a few, from a few people in my career. And I just think it's absolutely fantastic and really helpful. And that we can just have conversations one-on-one -on -one and you get to know them, you get to know what's going on in their life and what's going on professionally. And also the where they wanna be and help them do really well. Um, yeah, and to second that point, Juliana, you know, you're my direct uh, supervisor, and one of the things that I really love about you is the fact that, you know, I know that you're incredibly busy, but, you know, if there are seven minutes left in the meeting, you'll say, actually, anything else, you know, so we can use the next three minutes to really talk about something that's really pertaining to our life or any other minute challenges or granular issues that we might have. And you help us um, kind of walk through those as well. So um, just seconding that point, um, that was actually one of the things that I was going to say when Dina asked the question, but I'm glad that you mentioned it. Sorry. Can I jump on the, the G love train? Um, I've had managers that do just skip one-on-ones, which is, fine to an extent but to have the latter experience it it's kind of unreal for lack of a better description I mean those temperature checks that you're talking about have truly been incredibly impactful in my personal life but 
And that's translated into my work. It's made me a better employee and a better person when I know that I'm not just being stopped for my efforts. I am genuinely cared about as a human being, even though it might just be on a screen. Um, and so I think those that managerial check-in, everything that you were saying, Dina and Jean, Juliana, is so incredibly influential. And it's honestly not a huge ask either. Um, so I think it's definitely something to consider from my own perspective. Um, so when we think about these things, I know that uh, Kinsey, you you really talked um, really uh, amazingly about the DEI principles, um, and I'm just going to bring them up really quickly so we can kind of just look at them. Um, but you know, interested in anyone's thoughts from the from the team or um, our broader audience, the employer partners, um, when it comes to these things, which ones do you identify with? I'm just going to. Um, talk about a couple of them real quick. So principle one is DEI must be enacted as a pervasive institution and system-wide principle that begins with the transformation of the individual and their recognition of their role in a larger system. For me, that was that, that upward mobility piece. Um, interested in hearing other team members' thoughts. Um, and Dina, you know, the floor is definitely yours to, to speak to that as well. I definitely think principle one uh, holds such a huge value for company retention, employee retention as well. Thinking about what Yori was saying earlier about this is the first time that I sat down with my manager and they really cared about where I wanted to grow within the company within a year. I think that is so powerful because if you're not investing in your company and in your employees right away and casting that wider net vision, it kind of becomes mundane. The tasks kind of become uh, pointless, so to speak, when they're waking up and they're coming to work every day. So I think that is super important in number one, establishing that authentic relationship between employer and employee by just simply sitting them down and saying like, hey, I care about you and I care about your growth. And I'm also invested in helping you get to where you want to go. Right, that's an amazing point. Um, and then we can jump to principle two, you know, enacting DEI requires a continual process of learning disaggregating data and questioning assumptions about relevance and effectiveness. Um, I can also just kind of read through these real quick too. Um, the principle three is DEI practice and policies are designed to accommodate differences in the contexts of employees growing, not to treat all employees the same. Um, and I'll pause there for a minute because I'm assuming two or three might really um, you know, resonate with someone. Uh, Dina, what are your thoughts? Yeah, first thing that popped into my mind, especially with principle three, not to treat all employees the same. Um, I think about my work in the classroom, as well as working in corporate America, the training process, um, and in the classroom more specifically uh, with curriculum building. How are we making sure that our language is not exclusive around training methodology? Um, and again, that goes back to sitting down with one-on-one -on -one with your employees, right? And really getting to understand not only where they wanna grow, but how they best grow. What works for you in retaining information or even having a quick check-in after a training? Like, were you able to understand like most of what was going on and really welcoming that feedback, even if it's a little uncomfortable um, and it goes against the status quo of how companies are trained to train employees? Absolutely. Um... Did anyone else have thoughts about principle two or three? Yeah, Robert, I wanted to add to that. Um, mm -hmm. The is that I love the continual process of learning, kind of tying into how our employees grow and just being equitable about, 
you know, how they work and, and, and how they feel. And it goes along to these wellness sessions that are so awesome, these one-on-ones that, that Dina just mentioned, because our leaders are on this. And our leaders aren't, aren't on this looking at like, oh man, they can't handle the pressure. Uh, I, our leaders should be on these sessions looking at it like, okay, this is how this person works. And Robert, the way I work, the way you work, the way Kinsey work, the way everyone work could different, but doesn't mean it's, it's wrong, you know? And to actually take the time and to continually learn how someone works and support them and, and, and help support their growth um, really builds trust within the organization and it, it, it builds morale too of the team. And they feel that, uh, that, that, you know, their part uh, in the whole scheme of things is important. Um, so I wanted to bring that out. Thanks, Andre. Um, yeah, I totally agree. You know, um, so we can jump to principles four and five real quick. So principle four, DEI mindedness is that focus on intersectionality should be the guiding paradigm for language and action. Um, and then par, uh, principle five is clarity in language goals and measures to, uh, is vital to effective equitable practices. Um, yeah, Dina, did you have thoughts on, on either of these points? Absolutely. I think that is the most minor uh, but major misstep that could happen in employee and employer dissatisfaction. If there isn't a clear cut uh, measurable goal, if there isn't a clear cut communication on what the goal is and how the employee is working towards reaching that. Um, I think when there's room for ambiguity, there's also room for failure. Um, so I can't stress enough how much like clarity around measures and goals must be a parent truly in order for a company to succeed and really thrive. Yeah, and I think that's really important when it comes to companies like ours that are just really kind of growing um, as we <laughs> continue to do the work. And I think that is what makes it really engaging, but it's also these competing. For me, your sound is going in and out. So yeah, I missed for me as well. Okay. Maybe I can jump in. Uh, this is Dave and uh, Dina. So nice to meet you. Uh, and it's it's interesting hearing everyone speak about you know their their experiences with Mathis and especially some of the newer team members. When Arthur and I started the business, you know, two two and a bit years ago now. We, we started with a real purpose and a mission, and our focus was investing in, in people and bringing people into the company and, and evolving and, and letting them grow and prosper. And sitting in this, you know, for the last 30 minutes, listening to all of the team members talk about their experiences, it's, it's really enlightening to, you know, how we as leaders need to invest in our people and, and allow and create spaces for them to grow. I was on the wellness session last Friday that Andre is talking about, and I was just blown away at the, the space that was created to really be your, your authentic self. I think in, in a remote environment, it's more important than ever because we don't get to meet people face-to-face. -face. In fact, I haven't met half of the team face-to-face, -face, but I feel like I know them on a deeper level. So um, I'm just really enthusiastic about the future and, and, and the team that we've built. The, the people that probably aren't in Matheson are, are asking themselves, what are they putting in the water? Because you know everyone is so enthusiastic about what we're doing. And, we make mistakes, right? We're, we're a growing organization and we're, we're thinking about how to make sure that as we double in size, that we keep this consistency in the culture and in the community that we're building. Um, to the principle five, you know, something I have struggled with in the past, and I've, you know, lucky enough to work with this incredible team, including Nicole, clarity and language is something that sticks out for me. Um, it's very easy and everyone in the organization, right? You could be doing this work for 10 years and still make slights from time to time and not even be aware of it. So clarity and language for me sticks out because um, personally, I'm the type of person that likes to talk and use a lot of words, as you can probably tell already. Um, but it's really important to use the right words. And I think Nicole's helped me kind of understand what is the vocabulary we need to be using um, to make sure that we're consistent. So I think it goes back to, we're gonna make mistakes we're trying our best to improve over time and it's okay for for people to to kind of misstep from time to time as long as people are becoming aware of it and growing as a as an individual and um, so that's just my two cents i 
I love what you said there around creating a space to make mistakes. I think that's super important because as you said, like that's growth. And as a company that's still growing, I think that's very important to be able to create that safe space for not only like leadership to make those mistakes, but for employees and for managers as well. And I think the biggest piece that is very challenging or could be challenging for some companies is how do you restore uh, some of the harm that could be done from those mistakes? Like what are some practices that are being implemented to ensure that there's a safe transition back into a positive, healthy, thriving workspace? Just food for yeah. thought. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Dina. Um, and, you know, I just, I think the last thing I'll say is it's it's always, we're investing in our team and our people for the long term, right? The short term, people make mistakes along the way, but as as you look at it from a broader picture, you know, and you look at it from, you know, five years, it, it, it needs that lens of, okay, this is a long-term commitment and a journey. You know, we're going to progress. People will progress at different stages. People will also learn in different ways and also be more enthusiastic and passionate about certain topics than others, because that's just the makeup of their identity. So um, it's really interesting to see us dive into this work internally as we, you know, as we navigate it ourselves and obviously very fortunate to be surrounded with the leaders that we are. Um, so I'm feeling a sense of gratitude today. Same here, Dave. Um, you know, I know we have about 20 minutes left in the call, but, you know, I know a lot of our um, awesome employer partners are here today. If anyone has questions or anything um, for Dina or any members of the team, just around um, things that you might be experiencing, things that you kind of forecast in the future, um, happy to try to answer any of the questions that you might have today. I know this is a shy group, right? <laughs> or something I like to uh, piggyback off and just throw into the chat. Love to hear you all just share one word that you're feeling right now just to do a pulse check. You can go ahead and drop in the chat. Juliana said encouraged. I said energized. Bobby said gratitude. You already excited. Joy, we, ha we have motivated, supported Nia, Tiana. Hey, Tiana. Um, that's awesome. Andre, accepted. That's major. That's major. It's a nice, ex nice exercise, Dina. <laughs> Awesome. Thank y'all for sharing as we're not done with the chat just yet. I would love for you now to drop in the chat one word that you'd like to see the company embody five years from now as we continue these DEI conversations, as we continue our uh, wellness check-ins bi-weekly. One word that you would like to see the company embody five years from now. Ooh, I love that commitment. I promise I didn't steal that, Juliana. I had that written. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I put it first, so. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and copy paste then. Thanks. Very original. <laughs> Belonging, diversity, yes. Inclusivity. All right transparency. Yep, exactly. And I think th these are really beautiful exercises because um, as you kind of witnessed there, um, it was a little quiet for a moment because I feel like it's hard for 30 people to <laughs> really try to coordinate who's going to say something next. Um, Teddy said this aggregation. Nice. Andre said education. Uh, Nia said transparency. So um, when it comes to this particular exercise or any others, we think it's really um, imperative to try to have these conversations internally with your organizations. You know, this is just to our employer partners, even if it's, you know, 30 minutes, we, I, I feel as though, um, you know, scheduling the time 
really kind of helps uh, demarcate that in level of intentionality so that everyone can have an opportunity to, to go and um, really express who they are. You know, um, a lot of times I've seen like in, in, the, in the school setting, I know Dina, you've probably seen this too, where kids will have like a black top and you think, oh, people are just going to play basketball here. No, nah, people are mm -hmm. doing double dutch. People are doing, I don't, I don't know, um, different Box games, tic-tac-toe. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> these, these spaces, even though we're virtual, I think it's really important and, and really uh, impactful to have these types of conversations um, so we can just be uh, ourselves here. Um, and I think we're okay to, to close it out if you like. Um, I don't know, Dina, you probably have some parting words of wisdom with all of the leadership that you've had uh, throughout the years. Um, you know, if you were to say some, I mean, you know, your parting words to everyone here today, um, you know, when it comes to the DEI principles and just embodying those things in work, um, what, what are your thoughts and, and what would you like to share with everyone here today? Ooh, that's such a good question. Um... I definitely will say that continuing to lean in to discomfort, continuing to run towards the things that we fear the most, the conversations that we probably didn't grow up having, those are the conversations that need to be had. And if you continue to charge yourself every day to be courageous, to lead those conversations, or to say to yourself, I'm going to take a seat back. I'm going to listen to a voice other than the one that I've grown up listening to or maybe seeing on television because I truly want to learn. I think that's going to have the long lasting impact in your continual growth process. Awesome. Um, thank you, Dana, for those parting words. Um, and everyone, thank you for joining us today at the Matheson Growing Leaders in DEI series. Uh, we, will, we have recorded this, so we'll be able to share this um, if you'd like. But um, yeah, thank you all for joining us today. And we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank Thanks you again. for having me. Thanks, Dina. Thanks, Dina. Thanks, Roberts. Thanks, team. Thanks.